also, don't be moving my train around to make room for your stuff. I just spent 30 minutes making a cool battle for y'all. <laughs> yeah, dude, no. Of course not. I don't ever move your stuff, man. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Welcome back, my fellow nerds. Today I wanna to show you how I built these laptop trays, which this is actually a huge end game battle that our DM created for us. And as you can see, it's huge, and there's no room for laptops or like character sheets to be on the table itself. So these work amazing for that. We no longer have to be in the DM's way, and we can move around wherever we want to. So to build them, first thing I wanna show you is the blueprints that I went off of. So here's the scale of this blueprint. So two squares equals one inch on here. And this is the side profile, so you can kind of see what this looks like. And if you watch the table making video, you can, you might recognize this dotted line as the side profile of the table itself. So you can see this leg goes up, connects to this piece that goes into the slot of the table. And this magnet then connects to that metal piece that goes around the whole entire table. This is a front profile, and you might be wondering why this looks so weird and why it's at an angle, but that is so the twine can come from the side of the tray and go straight up to a point that is central to the where the magnet is connected to the metal. And I actually had started with a simpler design where there was a straight leg going up and the magnet was connected here, but then with the twine going straight up, it had to connect to the side of where the magnet was. So it made this 55 pound magnet become like, it only needed five pounds of force to remove it because it was connected to the side and it really compromised the strength of the magnet. So having this at an angle allows the magnet to be over and for this twine to connect at a central point so we can make use of that 55 pound magnet. And it's extremely safe to have a laptop on this. I went through a lot of different prototypes, and this is the best way that I found to do it. And it still looks nice. So the first thing is actually making the tray part of it. And I'm using a 1x12 here, and I'm cutting it to be 2 feet wide. Because it's a nice even number, for one, and also it's enough space for a normal size laptop and a mouse. So the next piece I need to make is this angled piece. And the easiest way I've found to find this angle was to draw this to real life scale on a separate sheet of paper. So I start off by drawing a straight line, which will represent the top of the tray. And then I draw another line four and a half inches above that because that's the distance from the tray to here. So that's how tall this leg needs to be. So I draw a line there, and then I need to figure out the distance between the tray and where the twine is going to be attached. So then I copy that measurement to here, and then I actually draw the twine on so I can actually see what I'm doing. Then I figure out that the one by two that I'm making this out of is an inch and a half wide. So I need, I draw a line from the end of the tray to an inch and a half past the end of the tray and then up above that half of inch and a half is three quarters so i i draw three quarters of an inch to the left of the center of the twine and three quarters of an inch to the right of it so that way i know exactly where the wood needs to go and then i actually put the wood on the piece of paper and use the wood itself as the ruler on each side draw the lines and then now that that's on there and i can line that piece of wood up really well i actually can put the ruler across that line that's four and a half inches higher than the tray and i can just eyeball that that ruler is in the same exact orientation as that line 
and I can just draw a line across my wood and that's the angle that it needs to be cut at. And then I can just line the saw up with that line. And once you get the saw in the angle that you want, make sure you do all of these chunks at the same time. That way you know that they're all the same angles. And the process here is pretty easy. You just cut the angle and then you take a speed square, rest it up against that angle you just created, and then measure four and a half inches down, make a little mark, and then just cut the angle on the other side. And once you make the first one, you can actually use that block as a jig to mark the heights of the other pieces and it makes it go really fast. So the next thing I need to do is actually make these pieces that slot into the table itself. And in theory, this is one and three quarters of an inch wide, which is one quarter of an inch wider than a one by two. So unfortunately we have to make these out of one by threes. And because woodworking is never perfect, I'm not going to just cut it at one and three quarters of an inch. I'm actually going to use the table to measure and how I do that is just screw the magnets into the back of this chunk of wood, put it into the table and then using a one by two along the bottom of this whole thing just smashed against the table because I know that that's the same width as these legs. I can just draw a line along the one by two then remove the magnets and cut the rest of that off with a table saw. So the next thing's pretty easy. It's just cutting the length of these pieces and it needs to be longer than the magnet is because to remove these from the table is it's a really strong magnet. So I actually need a pry bar and having the wood stick out past the magnet creates enough of a space for a mini pry bar to get in there to remove these magnets. So the next thing is actually adding the angles to this piece and so the first thing I need to do is figure out the middle of the magnet or where the magnet's going to sit so that way I can transfer that measurement over to the side where the twine is connecting so that way the twine is pulling on the center of the magnet to maximize the strength of it. And then from there I want the twine to go up at a 90 degree angle instead of being at some weird crooked angle so I actually used the measurement from before where I figured out the distance away from the tray that the twine is going to be and then using a right angle I stack up the leg and then this block on top of it and line up where the center of that block is so that way I know for a fact that the twine is going to be at a 90 degree angle and mark the bottom of this block so I know where the leg needs to attach to to make that happen and then I don't want the angle to go all the way to the bottom. It's just a style thing. I want it to go straight for a little bit. So I mark three quarters of an inch on this side of the block. And then I connect that line with the line where the leg is gonna connect. And then that's the angle that I need to cut off. And since we know these legs are all the same, because we cut them all at the same time. We also know that the legs are gonna be connecting to these blocks in the same spot. So that means that all of these pieces can be the same exact thing. We don't need to keep doing those measurements over and over again for each one. So we can just use the first block as a jig, cut all of these angles at one time, and then realign the saw to cut the other side and cut all of those angles at the same time.
Then I added the magnets and the easiest way to do this is actually use the holes of the magnet to make the marks. So all I did was line the edge of the magnet up with the edge of the block on the appropriate side and then used a pencil to mark the holes, drilled them out and then screwed them in. So next is actually connecting the block to the leg. And because once again, woodworking isn't perfect, our slot in our table isn't actually a perfect 90 degree. Um, the one by three actually made it so that the slot is a little bit angled down. So if I was to connect the block and the leg at a perfect 90, it would actually be really hard to fit it into that slot. So I'm just gonna put them together while it's actually on the table. And the way I do it is put the block in the slot, get it magneted in there, and then sandwich the leg up underneath it. And you have to hold it really hard because you don't want it moving around while you're drilling. So then I take a drill bit, drill down at whatever angle it needs to be, drill two holes, but make sure you leave a gap in the center because we're gonna be screwing that connection for the twine in in between these two screws. And then because this is a variable, very visible spot of the laptop tray, I don't want the screws to be visible. So I take a bigger size drill bit and drill right on top of the holes I just created. And that way I can sink the screw down far enough to where you won't see it. And then fill that gap above the screw with some sawdust and wood glue. Next thing I was sanding it all down and especially the parts where you're gonna have mounds of sawdust inevitably from the wood glue and sawdust mixture for the filler. So sand that down and then it becomes perfectly flat with the rest of the block, which is nice. And then also focusing on the laptop tray itself because that's where people are gonna have their character sheets or laptops and then also the mouse which you could use a mouse pad, but I like to just use the mouse on the wood itself. So having it nice and smooth is pretty important to me. And then I also took a hand sander to round off all of the edges on all of the pieces. Next thing was adding the hinges and once again just using the hinge itself to make the circles where the drill needs to be. Drilled the holes and screwed it into the bottom of the leg first and then with the hinge attached to the leg I used that as a measuring tool 
to figure out how far I needed to screw the hinge into from the back of the tray. And I don't want the tray hitting the table when it swings down because it might mar up the nice finish we have on the table. So I want the leg to stick out just slightly past the back of the tray so that that doesn't happen. So I have this lined up like this and then I just make a slight mark with my pencil and then fold it down, trace the circles once again, drill those out and screw the leg onto the tray. So the next thing is the stain, and this is a dark walnut varathane stain, which is the same stain we used on the table, so it blends in really nice. Um, the easiest way I found to do this was to stain these arms first, so that way I can magnet this to this rack, and I don't have to worry about getting the stain on the rack. And it's really nice to be able to magnet it to here, because then I can stain the whole thing instead of having to stain one side at a time and like flip it over to do either side. So I can just do it all in one go. So after the stain is dry, the final thing to do is finally add the twine. And the twine will be connected by these screw eyes. So need to drill a hole for them and then screw them in. Sometimes it's a little tough in spots, so you might need a tool to help. And once those are all in, we can add the twine to those. So I tie the top, the top part of it first and then I loop that through the eyelet and kind of pull on the twine until the tray is a little bit over level so that way when you add that first knot you can kind of push on the tray and it'll really cinch that knot down and get it really tight and so that way it won't go past level and then I also double knot them just to make it more secure after that I also add hot glue in there because twine is kind of hard to work with and I don't expect it to hold its knot very well as time goes on. So I just squeeze some hot glue into the crevices of the knot and that'll really hold it in place. After that's done, I cut the excess bits off of the twine that's coming out the other side of the knot. And then I even put a little bit of hot glue on the ends of it as well so it's not just continuously fraying. After that, twine is also very strand, a lot of strands come off twine, so you can get rid of those very easily with a lighter. Make sure you blow it out if it's like becoming too big of a flame. Uh, it's really easy to do and it's kind of fun.
And after that, the laptop trays are complete. And here's a little clip showing how I use this pry bar to help me remove these because otherwise it's extremely hard to remove. And that's what the point of that little gap. It's just enough space for the end of this pry bar to get in there and remove them. These things are extremely useful and I've absolutely loved using them so far. And I am really curious to see if you guys actually use some of these ideas. And if you do, please post in the comments. I would love to see what you guys come up with. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.